Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the real-time database to display real-time information on your application. It is also useful if you have the information in another database or another platform and you want to have information on real-time on your application. This is also useful if you want to send uh, user notifications, for example, when you update something and well, send a push notification to the user. The first uh, is to create on the database editor. We have the database editor over here inside your app editor. And um, for example, let's see that we have some articles or posts. And inside this post, we have the, the name, we have the um, uh, description, um, maybe the link. Okay. So we have this category with this element and the data here. We can add this uh, data manually here, but I'm going to show you how you can send this information from an external platform and save this information into the database and display this information on your application on real time. This all with no code. So the first thing is to create an app process. The app process are functions that can be shared between applications or re, uh, reuse this process on the same application, but also can be a process that can run on the backend and receive information and update your database. So basically you are creating endpoints to an API or webhooks. So I'm going to name this uh, update database uh, post. Uh, update the post of the database from webhook okay so imagine that we are going to send the name the um, the description and the link okay so these are the process inputs that we are going to send from an external platform. And once the this process is, is triggered, so we're going to save this information into the database. So let's add the save to database here and click on open database browser, and select the post. You can send also the ID, let's do this the ID. If you want to send the ID, it is useful if you want to update, for example, the the name or the post, you can do it. So uh, for the identifier for this uh, save to the database, we're going to choose the last uh, context data and the page data and the ID. So this is the identifier of the uh, uh, post and uh, the same with all the other elements uh, the name the description and the link okay so that's all uh, when we send this information is going to be saved on the database and we can have a callback for success after the information is saved, we're going to call the success. And you can return an OK or something. We don't need to return anything just to know that is OK or uh, error. And in case of error saving data, we're going to call the error callback. So that's all. Now we can save this information from an external source. The only thing that we need to do is enable the on cloud and generate a webhook URL. Okay, so let's see how this works. This 
now is a function on the server on Firebase that can be run on without to, to, to have the application open. Basically, it runs on the backend. So let's see. We don't have any data here. So I'm going to call this from the browser. This is the webhook I just copied. And let's send the variable, for example, the name, or well, first the ID. I'm going to name this as uh, one or zero. We're well, starting from zero, it's okay. And name, and the name is uh, new post. And then the description, which is, uh, this is my new post. And last the link, which is, for example, google.com. Send, and it you, you see the result, it's okay. And if we see on the database, now this information is saved. So you can call this from anywhere on the internet. If you need more secure, you can add a parameter, for example, a key. So, so you can validate this key. I'm going to make an example, for example, key. And before saving to the database, for example, uh, well, the, the most basic is to create a, a conditional and compare the key. with uh, any random value that you select, compare the key. And if the key is, if these two values are equal, so uh, you save into the database. If not, you can send an error. No, this is the basic uh, invalid key, okay? So you can do it for more secure. Also, you can get the inform get the the key from uh, from the database and use this information to validate. But well, different. These are different user cases. Okay. So for now, let's do it without the key. That's the the symbol. Uh, Saving the database and success. That's all. So now. Uh, and also you can do different things here. Uh, for example, sometimes uh, you ask me like, okay, I want to send a notification to all the users when something is updated. Uh, okay, you can do it uh, by, well, for example, when the data is saved, you have the option here for uh, send push notification and you can send the push notification to all the users you break the phone, you can choose the app uh, where you can send the, the notification. And if you can send to all or to a specific user, to a user ID and send an icon, okay? So you can do it in the same process, but this is the thing for another video. But for now, we are saving the information into the database. Okay, so let's show this information on real time on our application. Let's create a, a basic list. This is a container and I'm going to add another container inside and a text with a name for the article. Then the text for the description. And finally, um, well, I'm going to add another text, but also clickable to show the link. Okay, you can add more information clearly. The first container is to to have the limits or the list, and the second container we have here inside. I'm going to change the background color. This second container represents a single element of the list. So uh, I'm going to add a function here on the onload, it means when, when the page loads. And I'm going to get the information from the uh, database. So this function is to read information from the database. You have different options, uh, start add, add, add uh, filter, limit to first, limit to last, order by, 
Well, uh, basically the options you have available for the database in Firebase. Uh, but also you have the real time option. So I'm going to enable the real time. For now, I'm not going to filter the results. I'm just reading the real time and open the database browser. And I'm going to read all the posts. If I add an identifier, I can read only a single post, but for now I am reading all the posts. After read all the posts on real time, um, I'm going to uh, on the end because maybe I don't have uh, data. So if I don't have data, this callback will be called. If I have data, this callback will be called. But at the end callback, it's called always. I'm going to add, uh, add collections to UI to create a list. And <coughs> I'm going to send all the information I read from the database. Modify the elements. And you see that I can select uh, the list here because you can have multiple lists from multiple sources on the same page. For example, you can have lists from the database and also from the API on the same page. The second is for the list data. And here you are going to uh, enter the, the name. Well, this information that we are going to add is basically the information we have here, the name, the description, and the link. And it depends of the information we have on the database. So I'm going to change the text. This is the property of the control. I'm going to change this for the name. Then I'm going to change this for the description. You see that I am choosing the list context, which is the information for each element that we are rendering on the list. And the last one, I'm going to change it for the link. Okay. And maybe if I want uh, an interaction when uh, someone clicks on on the element on the list, I can call the function for open URL and open the link URL. So when someone clicks on a single element, uh, will be open on the link we had uh, over here. Okay, so we can preview the application also on the phone and also here. So you see that we have the information here. If I click on here, I'm going to be on Google. But this is a real time. So if I send another post, for example, here, second post, uh, this is uh, this is second post and up high I O and I send this information to, uh, well I update this because I said with the same ID so you see that is changed because I don't change the ID but so I update the post but if I send a new ID uh, uh, third Oh, another post because I am going to lose the coding. <laughs> uh, other post, and I'm going to send this again to Google. Okay, and now I change the ID for a new ID. So if I send this, you see that I have now these two posts. So this is real time. So uh, the how you can uh, have the information from another data source to have real time inside your application in an easy way is to create a, a, an, a process so you can get the information from a different source, save into the database, and then add a, a get database on real time. So you can get the data on real time and display this in your application. You can even send notifications or do whatever you want because you are reading this information on real time and you can do you know, what, what is better for you. Uh, well, I hope this was uh, useful for you. We are creating a lot of tutorials more uh, in English. We have a lot of tutorials now in Spanish, but we are uh, opening this new market on the not a Spanish uh, speaking market. 
So uh, if you want something else, uh, don't hate on, on as use. We can you can send us uh, a message here on the chat and also follow us on our YouTube tutorial. If you search up high no code on YouTube, you will see uh, here the uh, the 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 YouTube channel. So we are uploading here uh, a lot of, of tutorials. Also invite you to some webinars we have uh, over the next weeks. Thank you and see you.